Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, we are doing something a little bit different. We are gonna be removing that bad boy, uh, stripping the whole install out, and then we're actually, because the clients now want it moving to their new address. Um, so that is what we're up to today. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, the link is in one of the corners. Do us a favor, smash that for me, and let's get stuck into the video. So installation wise, um, so the idea is obviously this, this pod point here that's been, been installed, um, the clients are now gonna move it to, well, the clients want it moving to the new address. So it's not something that we normally do, to be honest, but we are, why not? You know, why not? It's, uh, let's just go for it. I've never actually fitted a pod point, to be honest, so I fancy do something different. So we're gonna be taking all this out. It's quite a decent run. now. I normally use the Ultra EV cable where it's got all my uh, cables all linked in together, my um, Cat6 cable and stuff. So it runs all the way around and then back into my meter cupboard. And the idea, the client wants to use everything they possibly can. Um, they don't really want to be then buying more cable when they don't need to. Um, so I've got a few little bits and bobs that I need to move in here. So we've got few little odds and sods and stuff and then bring that round so it's quite a decent run to be fair and on the new property it's probably a fraction of that but what they've used here is obviously your uh, six mil and also then they've run an independent um, obviously for your CT clamp independent now that to me is just a bit <sighs> Seemed a bit like a, I don't know how you call it, but a bit more messy, isn't it? Let's be honest. It just looks looks messier than the way that we do it. But I get it. The customer's already paid for it once to be installed, um, obviously by pod point, and that's what they've used. So he doesn't want to be spending out for new cable when you've got enough there. So that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to be stripping all this off. Um, I'm going to show you inside now the, the meter cupboard, if you bear with me two seconds. Okay, for, so for obvious reasons, I've covered over the meter numbers. Um, right, so as we can see, obviously your supply for the EVs come up and it inside the meter cupboard and split the tails off and put in our little EV board, okay? Now, my understanding of this, so we'll have a look at that in a second, is I've just got to reinstate this back into the normal house. Okay, so these have got to go, uh, and then we've got to put these back into the meter. Now, my understanding on that is that you shouldn't really be putting those inside the meter cupboard. Now, my understanding is on the regs, there's no regulation to say you can't do that, but you're supposed to have written permission from your local DNO to give you authorization to put something else in there. And you'll never get that. I don't know, you, you, they just won't do it. So I've asked. Um, so let me know in your comments below if that is, am I just being a bit of a, a wet wipe on all this um, or not? But on the new install, it's not gonna happen. So that's what we're up to now. So let's get this stripped out. Okay, so all removed now, got that out of the way, remove the CT clamp. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove all this, get this all, all done and dusted uh, all the way around um, and then trying to keep it as clean and tidy as we possibly can. But I'm gonna set you up on time-lapse so we can smash that out. Okay, so we've got, as you've just seen there, all the cable stripped up to this corner, okay? Um, so now we're gonna take this off, have a little look-see. Um, now, I'd always recommend really that you just do this by hand rather than using a screw gun to take these off. Um, because inevitably, over time, if you do 
You do it with an impact driver, the chances are it probably is going to break. Um, so let's just take, take this off. Um, like I say, it's a full removal here because um, you want everything completely gone. I'll try not to lose any of the screws because that would be a bit of a problem. Right, I've just seen an accident waiting to happen for me. So I've got a grill here. I put money on it that I'm going to drop something in there. So I'm just going to whack my mat down because that would do my head in if I drop that in there. Let's have a little look. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, a bit of a weird one. Uh, hold on, let me just bring you in a bit closer. Right, now, as we've all seen, this is the first time I've took this cover off, okay? Completely and utterly, genuinely first time. And if I'm not mistaken, that's not right. That's not right. So, why would they have done those? So does that mean this has been installed previously to this address? I don't know. A bit of a weird one, but obviously I've got this here. That's not cutting the mustard. Um, so yeah, so I'll ask the homeowner um, whether he's had this installed else, an, another address or a different location. Um, but we need to sort these out because uh, that's not sufficient enough um, so yeah so basically obviously the inside of your your pod point now um, so obviously there are connections for my tethered lead on here CT connections and obviously my incoming connections here so pretty straightforward just got to take this end out for now leave all this in situ all the rest of it obviously and do my CT uh, clamp um, on there and then I can take that off and then strip the rest of that out so two seconds okay so that is so that's all off the wall now uh, all gone <gasps> oh I know I'm like hiccuping it's no good is it um, so we just wrapped all that up and cable tied it because like I say we're going to be using that but it's not as big a run to be fair as as, uh, as this one is at the new place so pod point okay so we're going to be make sure you put your screws back in I know you can put them in a little bag, this, that, and the other. You can do, but don't. Just put them back in there. It's just easier. You ain't going to lose them. You know, trust me. Okay. So, right. So, that's that stage of this job. So, that's the removal of this one. So, now we're going to have to go back to the other site uh, and actually try and install this. So, best get back in the van. Right. Today's video is sponsored by Tradeify. For those of you who don't know what Tradeify is, where have you been? Hello, where have you been? So it is a job management software. Um, we use that to run our entire company. Um, that's on the construction side, the electrical side, you name it, we control it via that. So you can do it on your phone, your tablet, your iPad. You can smash it out on there. Also, you can do certificates. So like today, I can use that for my certification. So if you want to give it a free trial like we did, Zach, genuinely, that is what we did. Um, the link will be in the description below. And if you do love it like we did, use the promo code GHAWK50 and you'll get 50% off for the first three months. Right, come on, enough said, get back to your brew. Right, we're at the new site address. Um, so we're gonna show you the install. So we've got a mains isolator here. Uh, and then it obviously bombs through. It's great because I've actually got a 100 amp um, incomer, which is actually better, perfect for what you want on an EV. So what we're gonna do is gonna take them out of here and I'm gonna split the tails on the other side because yes, I could fit that unit in here like, I, like the previous installation was, but I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I want it on the inside. So let's take you around to the other side of the garage and show you what's uh, going on there. 
So we're at the other side now. Um, so we've got a Hager uh, board that's on and it is a split load board. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna pull the tails through here um, and we're gonna pull the tails through and then we're gonna split them, put the other little board on here and then we're gonna be mounting that up and wiring it on the inside here and then go around, do a couple of steps in it that way. And then the charger, new charger location is going to be on this, this end. So we're gonna keep the pod point over more this side near the post and then the actual uh, plug is gonna be a little bit further down here. Um, so that's the plan, that's what I'm up to. Um, so the, yeah, it's a bit, bit annoying about the multiple holes in there, I'll have to deal with that. Um, now, some of you might be saying, why are you not, um, why are we not putting an RCBO in there and moving everything down? Because it hasn't got its own, um, a separate neutral bar, as soon as you put that in, it just trips all the RCDs out and obviously we don't want to be doing that and the client wants to use all the equipment that he's already got because he doesn't really want to be paying for anything else. So it's fine, nothing wrong with that. So we're going to get those sorted, get the tail, what I'm going to do is going to get those tails done last. I'm going to work from the pod point back this way. Um, so that is what I'm up to. So the first job for me is mounting up the um, pod point, but not until I've drank my tea. So true to fashion, it's hammering it down now. So still in shorts and t-shirt you see at the minute. It's, it's boiling, it's not cold, it's just, yeah, such is life. So I've just dropped this back on for now. Um, so we've mounted that up and I've found some um, sort of blanks, that the fire rated blanks to push those in there that should take care of that IP rating. But the previous person who's installed this has done a right hash job really. So they've had to, so rather than drill it there, they've done it here so it doesn't fit that well. So that stuffing gland isn't the nicest, but you know, one-handed, sorry about that. Um, but it is what it is. Um, so what we're gonna do now, so we've drilled that down, okay? So it's drilled down so we can get the, the curve on it so it's not too bad. I've got to silicone all that up. Um, and then what I've done is I've got it down here now so ran all the way along, stepped it in and out on there and there. So now I'm just looking at the best location for this lot. So I think it's gonna end up going in amongst here. So we'll take the meter tails out. I've just gotta go and tell the, the homeowners that I've gotta disconnect all the power for now. Um, I'm gonna take them out of here and then I think I'm gonna mount this little unit up. Hold on, I'll try and do it one-handed. Might be better if I just sit you up here, eh? On the shelf, got a handy little shelf. Oh, one key. So, right, so, and what I'm thinking is if I mount this down here, okay, on next to, next to here. Um, I've measured where the shelves go as well, so that's gonna be in the way. Uh, it's an awkward one, because I don't really wanna be I don't know, do I do it at the top? That's the thing, I, I don't know whether just to do it up there. <laughs> I've got plenty of the EV cable, got plenty of that. It's just whether I, I locate it next to the board. It's, I think that's gonna be the right move, dare I say it. I think, I don't know, might be down here. Well, you'll see in a second whether it's down here or up there, I'll make your mind. And then you guess, right, have a little guess and then see what you think on the next clip was which way I went. Right, it's been a bit of a right pain, to be honest. Oh, I don't think that's a bit dirty. There you go, is that better? Um, it's been like torrential rain outside, like proper, proper torrential rain. So I've had to sort of duck in and out of all that. So I've got the new, um, new board mounted up. Uh, yeah, you guessed it. You know I was gonna, gonna go up there. Now, it's, Oh, do you know what? Full disclaimer here. I'll never fit one of them again. That board, it's just too hard, too hard work. Too fiddly, too, it's too small. It's a right pain in the backside. It really, really is, and it's done my head in. And it's take, taken way longer, so which means it costs more money when I could have just brought another one with me. And yeah, it would have cost a little bit more in materials, but 
you're doing better. So note to self, don't ever agree to fit one of them again. Good job, we've got some biscuits. Nice. So, while I'm munching on that, I've got CT clamps on. That's all on. Um, I've also had to change the meter tails on there. Again, another thing that wasn't supposed to be there, but you know, such is life, which I'll find them. Mm, what have I done with it? It's very messy. Very messy now. I don't know what I've done with them. It's very annoying. Anyway, I'll find it for you in a minute. Um, basically, it's from the original install. Ah, I know where it is. It's in my van. There we go. Here we go. So, original install. Okay, so I haven't just literally took it out of those um, like Henley blocks. And this is what you are greeted with on there. So, that. So that is how it's been terminated before and used. So, can't use that. Yeah, you could cut it shorter and stuff, and I agree with that, but it wouldn't work. It wouldn't fit in a nice location. So that isn't gonna happen, is it? So, I had to go and get some different, some 16 mil tails. Oh, well. So, now it's stopped raining, we can get the pod point bit tested out, okay? Because it's been a bit of a absolute pain in my arse. So, like I said, the this bit coming into here has not been done fantastic. Um, so I've left it quite long. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the arrangement. I don't know if somebody's bloody installed this twice or something. I don't, I don't know. It's really weird. Right weird setup. So the gist of it is now for me. I've got the other end here of my CT, so I'm gonna have to wire wire that into this terminal at the bottom, and then I've got my uh, live neutral on Earth. But I'm gonna do my dead testing now and, and certificate that side of it as well. So I'll do that now. Um, and get those bits sorted. But yeah, been fun. So I'm just gonna go grab my tester and I'll be back. Okay, as with everything, always need to do your dead test. So I've just linked out that other end and this is the res results that we were getting. So it's 0.06. Okay, so I need to do my insulation resistance test, which is my obviously next one uh, to do. It shouldn't be any issues with it, but you never know. So we're gonna go uh, down the other end and I'm going to go and do that. So I'll go and test that out um, down that end and I'll be back, hold on. So coming to wire this bad boy in, obviously insulation resistance passed out as a perfect result of 999. Okay, so I wasn't expecting anything otherwise, because you'd, but you still have to test it. It's not like you can just go, yeah, it's fine. So. Essentially, this is just normal sort of Cat5 or Cat6 cable. Um, so what, what you do on the old CTs is, so you've just basically got to match up the other, other pair. So the pair down at the other end, which is down just down there at the meter, uh, we've used the, the brown and white pair. Um, and then at the brown and, sorry, what am I on about? brown pair and the blue pair. Uh, the reason why I said white is because they've got a brown and white stripe. You know, that's how it is. So you keep those pairs up and obviously you're just wiring them in the same configuration because it's just essentially a signal wire. And then you pop that in there, but ever as always, always prepared with all my gear. The one thing you've got to be careful of is, is as you're tightening stuff up, especially when you've got lots of like PCB boards like this, you've got, um, <laughs> you can rip them off, rip parts off really easy. So you just have to be really mindful of that. So you're wiring your pair up. You don't have to cut the other uh, orange and, and, um, uh, and green pair off here. You can leave them in situ because if one ends up being faulty down the other end, um, 
if one ends up faulty down there, you can literally don't have to re replace the whole cable. You can end up using the other pair as long as they're okay. Um, so on this here, like I say, you can, I don't want to keep it too tight because I want to, if they do change this charger, which I imagine they will, um, then we can obviously alter it to suit. I don't, in fairness, I don't think originally this has been installed that great, if I'm honest. But, you know, when you're, you're trying to polish one, aren't you? You know what I'm saying? But you, you're making it as good as you, as you can. So, in theory now, we are all ready. Let's bring you in a bit closer. So, like I say, I've left this long because if we do change change that, you know, we've got plenty of slack to manoeuvre. CT clamp um, is in for my cat, cat cable. Obviously, the line is for my tethered lead. So, it's just a case of getting that back on. Also, there is a key facility, so you can lock this one off. So, you, if you've got cheeky little neighbours, who get an EV charger and they are like next door and they go, oh, do you know what? Whack that little bad boy on. Uh, you can lock this one off. So it's a cool little feature. Um, so we'll get this cover on. I'm just going to grab the screws. Right, I thought, I thought I lost one. I thought I'd lost a screw. Oh, right. So, I've got to wrap the lead round to whether I go that way. It's a bit annoying, that, isn't it? That key facility. See that key facility, right? As you wrap this up, it gets blocked. But, whatever. Um, if this was a new install and it was a, well, a new charging point, I would not be coming in this way because I think it's a bit of a stupid idea uh, that somebody's done that. And I'm going to be perfectly honest, I think it causes more issues when you don't need to. You don't need to put it, put it there at all. So what we're going to do is mount the... Um, the socket there on the wall. So the socket is going to go like on here. So we're going to make sure that fits in nicely and it's not really awkward to do. So that is basically where it's going to go. Um, the thing is with that, it does make it project quite a bit on the walkway through, but that is where the customer has requested it. So that is where the bad boy will go. So it's going to go a little bit higher there to catch the brick. SDS time. I apologise for the noise. It is what it is. Okay, so that's mounted up and she will live like that. Okay, so I now need to do my live testing, make sure the RCD is working and all that sort of stuff. So I'm just gonna grab my iPad, put in the results that I already had, because if I don't, I'm gonna forget and I'll have to refer back to the video and that's silly because I should be doing it right now. So two seconds and I will do that. <sighs> right, yet again, caught out with the rain. Um, it's literally, it's like, oh God, it's so annoying. So anyway, it's all energized. Um, so I've tested it out now. So while that's raining, I'm gonna uh, try and clear some of the kit away. So I've tested it all out. Um, so I've done my ZS, I have done my uh, ZE, I've done my PFC, uh, and I've also done my RCD testing. So they're all took care of nicely. I just wanna now 
use uh, my obviously EV tester and make sure that everything's all powered up and tickety-boo and we're all ready to go. So this rain, the annoying thing is it doesn't last long, it's just that it stops you from just getting on. So just, yeah, frustrated. So like I say, it's slowing down now a lot, slowing down. It's just that you have to keep moving all the kit in and the camera and all that sort of stuff because you get soaked, it's well annoying. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that should die off, hold on. Right, it's semi-raining, not too bad. So I'm just gonna try and, try and show you this. So pod point on here, it's now in a state where it's saying, no, I'm not charging, not charging. So the idea is, let me just plug that. Put you on there a lot, put you on there. So the reason behind these is obviously, I use the Q-Tech one. Um, it imitates having a car. I haven't got a car here, so I don't know, so that's what it's for. So it's plugged in. Okay, so I've also got it in, so your CT, CP state, sorry, tells you, so you select that to tell you what you want it to recreate. So for me, is that it's charging with no fan, so I'm on, on my C setting here, and it's turn, turned around then, and obviously indicated on the LED that it is now charging a vehicle, although it's not a vehicle, it's me. So. That is what I'm doing now. So the next thing for me is I'm gonna do a true um, ZS reading as well off here to make sure we're all good to go on that. So yeah, so pretty much there, just gotta wrap it up, do that last few tests, and then I'll show you the final stuff. Yeah. Okay, it's hammering it down now. Um, so I'll just do this really quickly. Um, so we have now gone in for our true uh, ZS reading straight into the back there and we are all ready to go on there. So this charge point is ready to be used now. So I'm gonna wrap that up and that's it. So hopefully, just another quick tip for you just before you finish up, because I, I am getting soaked, <laughs> is once you've all finished, is just wipe it down with some big wipes. It makes a hell of a difference. Although this is a, a second, third, fourth time of this being fitted somewhere else. Just just give it a little bit of a bit of a spruce up and with the armoured here coming through. So it will make a massive difference if you do that. Just do just a quick blast over with the big wipes and then a big tidy up or yeah, a big tidy up for me and then I'm out. So hopefully you've enjoyed it and if you have, don't forget to leave your comments below. Give us a thumbs up and if you are new to the channel, you've not subscribed, then do that little bad boy as well. Link her in the corner. Right, see you next time guys. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.